All right, guys, what's going on? So people have requested more real estate videos and I would love to talk more about them because the real estate market is very, very interesting right now. So coming into 2019, uh, so if you see this video at a later time down the road in 2019, uh, hopefully things change for the better. Um, but in general, we're talking coming into 2019, the big question has been, should I get my first property? Is now a good time to buy another property, my first uh, investment property, a commercial property? So I want to talk about that and kind of this, even the downturn and what people are, you know, what could really be expected out of this. So, and then we're going to talk everything from affordability, the mortgage rates. And then, you know, I want to even show you guys how things in supply has changed and really what this answer is to answer this question. Is it a good time or not? So if you guys are new, you have to you have to subscribe. You're being a part of the cult. That's uh, what we got going on here. Um, but drop a like or comment. Let me know too if you guys are trying to get something. If you're in California, hit us up. California, Texas, Florida, New York, um, Wisconsin, uh, Arizona, Colorado. I think there's a bunch of other states. So any of those states, we have TTF people in real estate already. So pretty exciting. Jersey, a lot of people in Jersey as well too. So hit me up if you're trying to do something in any of those states. Um, but let's talk about this. Um, is it going to be a good time to buy? Uh, yes and no. It really, what has already happened is it is a buyer's market. It's quickly shifted from sellers to buyers. However, this is the early stages of the buyer's market, in my opinion, where I still think there's going to be more room and we're already seeing it as Things, if things tighten more, especially with rates and we see those go higher, but now people, you know, getting out of a house, it's, it's already a liquid to begin with. It's going to get a lot harder. So as long as it's taking more time to sell and whatnot, but it's giving more options. And that's the only thing now is that comparing this to a year ago and even my take on how I was very buy, buy, buy trigger happy everybody in the market was. And that's because there was limited supply. You would take whatever you could got. You were working with it because even when you went to sell, that was the same case. Now people are trying to sell and one, you're getting people who, okay, they want to get their top dollar. And now the other people who want to sell, well, they just want to get out of it. And they're like, okay, I'm not going through 08 again, whatever it may be, if they've already held too. So supply has drastically increased out of nowhere. Uh, and that's kind of worrisome. I'm even looking into, I have kind of a theory related to the Fed and their tapering off of, you know, buying assets. And I think, you know, them in mortgage backed securities may have something to do with that. But even then your typical homeowner is looking to sell. So that's what's happening. The only advantage you're getting right now is people are more willing to wiggle with price at a certain degree, you know, Still, some people aren't willing to sell for a low price no matter what, but you're getting more wiggle room with stuff on the market. And it's also, you know, you're being able to get it at a, in the sense where it's, you, you just have better properties, better, higher quality properties in the sense now more options, the same 500, 600, $700,000 is getting you a more updated, cleaner, even a flip. And, you know, because people are looking to get out of it. And that's one thing I've appreciated now and looking for stuff is I could get some nice properties for relatively cheap again, as people are looking to get out of them, even on the wholesaling real estate agent. And for you guys, you guys could get into it in a big aspect by finding people. There's a lot of opportunities now because, again, people are going to want money and to get out of these properties. So there there's opportunities everywhere. Even uh, I talked about it on the live stream. I'm going to make a video even with seller financing and how you guys could use this market to your advantage with that now too. So that's, and then that's, again, that's people want to sell. And if that gets increasingly more difficult, that's the problem, but that's the plus sides for buying in 2019. And that's now the next thing you have to think about is what are your goals with it? If you do want to get a property now is if you are looking to find just a property to live in, then, you know, you, you're just going to get a nicer property. You're going to have more options and have stuff today that you wouldn't have really had available to you a few months ago. That's, or even a year ago, which is one of the best parts. Give it more time. I think as 2019 comes in, you will have more options. So if you're looking to buy, that's one thing. If you're looking to flip it, uh, you have to be really, really diligent in being able to get in on a good price. Now, 
the good thing, and I've talked about this, is commercial. Uh, if you're doing commercial a rental property, those are, you know, your cash flow is pretty fixed. You get someone to buy a property or you buy something with a lease in it, that's good. So 2019, you know, and those have actually still been pretty active. So commercial isn't too bad. And that's kind of buying in 2019. I think commercial is is the easier move. However, again, some of the same headwinds still need to be accounted for. But overall, buying with 2019 here is this is why I have the mortgage calculator up. I just want to, you know, the simple answer to this is should you buy, a, you have to align your goals. There is going to be a good opportunity. And I think that's why I'm saying the real estate market moves fast, but slow, but mainly slow. You know, this was a sudden change, but for the most part, upticks in it switching around will, you know, that will take some time. But if you're really active in looking and you're zoning in on an area and you're really making a plan from today, before 2019 starts coming in, you know, and you could spend six months on this search and be ready to purchase mid-year, then you're going to be, able, you're going to really be able to spot the deals and see what's happening with the market and everything. And that's what I recommend you do. And that's the first step I would do is go get pre-approved or go to a lender, go to your bank and figure out what you can get for a loan. See what you're going to qualify for figure out what the interest they're saying would be and at what interest payment, what is the payment and maybe, and ask them what, what would the payment be if they, if the interest rate changed, because you know, those are, are forecasted to go up and figure out how you, you are going to be able to pay for it and know what you could afford. So when the, you know, one, you're able to zone in and when the time is right, you'll know, or they'll tell you, Hey, this is what you need to do or change, uh, you know, income wise, make more money here, spend less here, report this, yada, yada, yada. And they'll let you know if you make certain changes or a certain amount of money, you'll be able to qualify for X amount. So if you don't have a banker lender, we got, we got lending tips. He'll hook you up. Uh, we have people who will do that. Uh, I think nationwide, but California and any of those other States hit me up. We have lenders, a bunch of them who are really able to do that. But at the end of the day, by figuring that out and knowing you're going to be just more prepared and ready to execute. But now it's the whole idea of knowing what you getting to understand what you're going to you what you could afford what you'll need to have ready to go and then now interest payments cuz now as interest rates are factored to go up into the market or over the years you know that's one thing so even if prices stay the same same there at now or go down if interest keeps rising the same priced home is going to cost the same amount of money uh, or even more a cheaper home might have a higher payment and that's what's crazy now because that is what's going on. You know, I bought my, some of my homes in 2016. I have three, I thought they were high at the time, like three and a half percent mortgages. People are paying 6% now and, and then the home price is higher. So if home prices stay the same, but interest rates go up, people's payments will go up. That's why I said, prepare for that and understand how your payment will change and how interest rates will change your affordability so you could still be in the loop and know what you really need to do. Or if it, if it will be a negligible, negligible, as I said, difference, you don't, you know, you don't really have to worry about it. So that's one thing I, I think a lot of people, and that's how the market is going to be with prices might stay the same interest rates go up. Uh, the issue is going to be affordability and supply, but getting ready and getting prepared, I think is the first thing. And if you find a deal as always in real estate, if anybody's willing to sell a property, 30% below market value, take that shit. Uh, but again, now the difference is you really have to think what your future goal and plan is because we were you we used to be able to buy it. You know you would sell it instantly. The time and how much you're going to sell it for is changing. And now that's where like you look at houses and we see what's up here. People are willing, uh, you know, I saw one of these houses. I thought it was pretty nice. Where is it? I think it was this one. No, oh, that one's not nice. But I think it was actually, no, I got to find it. But the price they put it at, people are willing to sell their either if they want to sell it fast, you know, they're going to sell it at a low price, pretty much 2016 prices, it'll sell. But if they're trying to take their profits, it's going to take them time. But now even in LA, this is just single family homes, just a house at 750 max, you're getting more options again, as you're seeing here in LA. And like it used to be and you guys have seen these on past live stream and stuff. Here's a million dollars, a million dollars. Now it actually gets you a lot more options in and around LA, Beverly Hills, Bel Air, all that stuff. So it's, but that 
traditionally wasn't there before, but now again, more supply and people trying to take their money out. So it's pretty cool. And then the pricing is getting affected and people are, you know, they're willing to sell it lower to take those profits. So there's that. The last part I wanted to discuss was a crash and how, even though we are forecasting it, it being a buyer's market, price is going down and there being an opportunity for you guys to get homes at a cheaper price. And the market is, you know, showing really, if, if things really do continue to get worse and worse and negative, that's not going to be good, but this isn't going to be 2008. A lot of people need to understand that, that this is a different slowdown. And even what's forecasted is price growth to taper, but not even not decline. It's supposed to grow at three instead of seven. And, you know, again, people still aren't willing yet. There hasn't been anything to cause a panic or a, a run on getting money or rush for liquidity, maybe foreign investors and certain people, but not all around. So that's something that needs to be taken in, in a consideration. It reminds me, of, you know, a little history lesson of Germany and inflation after like the World War II stuff and the hyperinflation where they would use even cigarettes for currency because it was wheelbarrows of money because the hyperinflation was so crazy. Um, they, uh, what was I bringing up Germany for? What was this history lesson for? I, I totally blank. I got a text message, but oh yes, the the aversion for this crash. And pretty much after that, even the next 40 to 60 years of German politics and monetary policy, with that in the back of their mind in the culture and history, they've been very averse to anything politically that would cause inflation or monetary policy. They've been terrified of it. So the same thing is kind of with the US and real estate and even our generation of millennials. Millennials don't want to purchase a lot of people, if you live through the 28 crash and it was recent enough, whether it was a kid and you got to see your family go through it and remember the effects, you were an adult, you lost a lot of things. It didn't matter what the case was, but that is so recent in people's memory that any sort of real estate slowdown or crash, they think it's going to be 20, 2008 or that's what they're worried about. So that's not going to be the case. It's just that is the most recent one in memory, but that was a very unique leverage situation that doesn't necessarily happen. And we're, we're just nowhere near that right now to cause that would be, I, I would be fascinated and I would learn a, a, a lot and I would have really been missing out a lot of things if that was the case. So, but anything could happen, I guess. Right. And we'll see if, as it develops, you know, I'll keep you posted. I'm sure if it does change, we'll, we might get a hint at it, but that's pretty much it. Uh, this is kind of an intro to it. Let me know if this answers some of your questions. If you have more, feel free. Please let me know. I, I want to answer this for you guys. Um, uh, you guys know how I feel investing, saving, trading, and taking that money, real estate, cashing out real estate, putting it back into trading, you know, using those in conjunction is awesome. So get on that. Make sure you guys have goals with that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I love you all. Stay in school. Good luck tomorrow.